Hello and welcome again to the Love Spoon Workshop. Hopefully we're live, hopefully we got sound, everything's okay. Hope everyone is well. Uh, yeah, let's get straight into it. We're going to do a live demonstration of carving. I've got this Love Spoon in the vise, it's all marked out. It's a nice piece of oak. It's not going to be the easiest piece of wood for carving. I'm slightly sitting at a little bit of an angle. I'll just check that we got our sound okay there. Two seconds. Let's just check that one. This love spoon. Yeah, we're all okay. So we've got the movement fine and we got the sound fine. Uh, yeah, I'm sitting at a slight angle because this love spoon, they've actually requested quite a large love spoon. It's a bespoke spoon that we're working on. And I'm gonna use it then to highlight some um, safety points some ideas like that that we, excuse me, that we use um, and that we consider then uh, and to share with you why we carve in the style that we do. You can see somebody's joined us. Oh, hiya, Tommy. Glad you're here with us. Yeah, we're just getting started. Hope you're okay. Uh, yeah, so to explain our method, to explain how we go about things, First thing is that we secure whatever we're working in, in a vise. I know some of this that we, we've been over before, but the idea of this one is to just go over a little bit of the safety side of things. Ah, hello as well from Yorktown, the wood brewing warrior. Been seeing some of your videos. Always nice to see what you're up to. Um, yeah, we, we, we're just going through why we use this method then. And the reason that I secure in the vise is because it allows me to get both hands on the tool itself. And the reason, the sort of inspiration then for this theme for our live stream, I, I, I was looking, I won't say where I saw this, but there were, was sort of advice being given uh, for a young, a, young, it was a, a, a young boy then who was interested in wood carving and there's a lot of advice, and I know there's different methods for wood carving, different ways you can do things. And different people were giving different advice with it. And it just got me thinking about how we wood carve and why we do it the way we do it. So to give you a little bit of um, background then, in the same area that this... Uh, these questions were being put forward to, on how to get started, how to, to do wood carving. There were a few sort of updates on people having a few accidents, cutting themselves and putting gouges in their hands and things like this. And it, it did get me thinking, you know, why is that happening? And I've noticed that it's, it's popular wood carving um, more what we would refer to then whittling and so people are using uh, gloves to to whittle with and they're using they, they use a method that we we don't actually use ourselves which is more where they would hold whatever they're carving and and whittle away so just sort of thought I'd go through well why we don't do that and and why our method then why we use it really Basically, by securing it in the vise or in a clamp or whatever you've got available, you can get both hands onto the tool itself and you can cut away from yourself. So safety-wise, it, it's a lot more, you know, it, it, it is a, a, lot, a lot safer in some ways. Yeah, there's always an element of risk because you're working with sharp tools. But cutting away from yourself is, you know, by and large safer than cutting towards then your hand. Um, and as, as you're joining us then, I'd be interested to know, what methods do, do other people use? Do you, do you secure your wood carving in a vise? Do you cut away from yourself? Do you cut towards your hand? Just interested to know what others do. So that was basically, you know, what I was explaining then on this in regard to this particular question is that we use these methods because we're carving on a daily basis and I, I, I do feel that it's a bit safer to be cutting away from yourself and to have it secured in some way 
because what I basically do, this back hand, my right hand, that is, is, is pushing. That does a lot of the pushing work for us. And then my front hand, my left hand then, that, that controls a lot of what we do. I always sort of think whenever I do, you know, we've done this one and as you can see from the title, safety is a bit of the theme with it. And it's always a little bit risky to, to do that because um, you're doing a live stream, it'll be the very time that something goes wrong. You'll, you'll cut yourself. So there is always risk involved. But I think the point that I'm trying to get to is that the methods that we use, the reason we use these methods is to minimise the risk involved in the wood carving that we do. But as I said, throw it open to you all and let us know. Let us know what methods you use. How, how do you approach it? Do you use the same methods as us? Do you use a different method? Um, yeah, let us know. One thing then I would say is um, when it comes to using gloves, I, I, I the one little thing, because I have at different times, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you're, you're not carving, you haven't got gloves. One thing I would say on that is that your sense of touch is quite an important thing to be able, being able to feel as as you're carving, that that's quite an important thing. It's you know the sense of touch is quite important then to to the wood carving process, and also as well if I've got a sort of a third party between. So if I if I put um, gloves on now because we do get asked about these things, and I know you've got specific carving gloves, but if I put that on there now straight away. I lose a little bit of control. My hands, and I know you know these aren't carving gloves, but my hands, I feel at the gouge, I haven't got the same control. I haven't got that same feel for what I'm doing, and I haven't got as good a grip. I can do it, but I, I just feel that I lose quite a lot by doing it. But there we are. Let us know. Let us know your thoughts on it. Do you use gloves? Do you... Hold what you're carving in your hand. Do you hold it in a vise? How do you go about? What is your process? So as you can see, the first thing I'm carving uh, this afternoon is this Celtic knot at the top. So this is a bespoke love spoon and we're just carving that Celtic knot. And the idea of what we're gonna try and do is to cr try and create that impression of the knot going under and over. So we're, we're doing our stop cuts, but that's the effect that we're, we're trying to create is of a knot that continually goes over and under itself, basically. And some of our videos, some of our upcoming videos, the Celtic symbols that we use, they're gonna be featuring quite heavily. Um, I think we were, uh, thinking about yeah we were using it last week and Celtic designs we like them because we like putting a story and a message into our work and so being able to do that the Celtic symbols they they do have natural messages in them so you can see we just do our stop cuts to create that effect of the knot going under and over good afternoon, Donna. Good, afternoon. good afternoon Thomas Woodcarver joining us so I've been, I've been introducing, talking about safety and things like that. Have, have you got any thoughts, any pointers on that on that subject? Well, it is extremely important to work safely, you know, as safely as possible. Then, yeah. Um, one of the major. Well, the interesting thing, you you would have basically that is the that is the one. That is the one definite area that you would have spent time with me is, is in regard to showing me how to carve safely. That was one, you know, whilst you, I mean, basically dad gave me the freedom to carve and learn to carve in my own style and to approach it in my own way. But one thing that he, he definitely showed me was that you know, he, he wouldn't let me carve towards myself and always said both hands on the on the on the, the tool as you're cutting it. Where did that come from then? Who 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 sort of taught you or was it self taught? Where well, did you come across those me, ideas? I was fortunate enough to serve uh, an apprenticeship. So I 
I um, served my time as a carpenter joiner, and so. So um, you were basically taught by I, people I, I who was were doing it. To work with different. We used to have six months with each carpenter, and um, you you learned to um, you know you you were taught the. Was there a little bit of um. With the apprentices then, if somebody started doing something that was considered dangerous, whoop, just caught the camera a little bit there. Hopefully it didn't move it too much. Um, if yeah, if an apprentice or someone was doing something that was regarded as a little bit dangerous then, would, would it be, um, it would be highlighted then, would it? Well, yes, I mean, you weren't humiliated or anything, but you were just taught. <laughs> um, you were stopped pretty quickly, was it? Even the same, even right down, Believe it or not, to, to using a sweeping brush. <laughs> so they'd have a correct, an incorrect method for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause, um, you know, you, you, you wouldn't go, I mean, it's difficult, like, cause, you know, the, the, the place that I served my time, we had carpenters, uh, carpenter joiners, um, but you also had laborers. Yeah. So, you know, the laborer would um, tend to be doing the, the sweeping up and the cleaning up. Um, but e even just using a simple um, sweeping brush, you know. It was still regarded that there was a right way and a wrong way. And whilst you're talking about safety as far as cutting yourself with chisels. Yeah. I mean, even, go oh, how many years ago now? So my apprenticeship. 50 years? More. 50, 56, 57 years ago, yeah. we were concerned about how you swept up. Yeah. Because of the dust. There we are. You know, if you just got a brush and swept like mine, yeah, you know, you were making more dust. And, um, you know, you were working with carpenters. So you couldn't be, you, you couldn't be aggressive with the sweeping brush. <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, it sounds, it sounds perhaps trivial and simple. But, but it's true, you know, you sweep up and create the dust. Um, then you're not too popular in the... I don't think we uh, knew very much then about sort of, um, the, you know, lung cancer and that kind of thing. Yeah. It was sort of, smoking was one of the um, aspects then. Um, but dust in the workshop, it was dangerous from, um, you know, you had to sweep up every day. Yeah. Um, you, you can get what they call dust fires, I think. You know, you have to be careful um, how yeah, much they, dust you create. Well, now health and safety, don't they? They regard it as a fire hazard, yeah. is, is, exactly. is so, what happens. Now, you may notice I've gone from doing our knot, I'm now working on doing our daffodil. I tell you, the reason that um, I've changed that is one issue I was having is because I mentioned to you earlier, it's such a long spoon but I can't quite get that where I want to, so I'll probably reposition the camera and carry on with the Celtic knot. Excuse me, this is a, bit, a particularly long love spoon that we've asked for. Interesting things as well, um, anyone doing love spoons, anyone interested in having to go at love spoons, because this is a longer love spoon, what we've done is that twist, there's more wood than we would have on a smaller spoon because you have to be thinking about the strength and the stability of that love spoon. So basically, as you get larger, as the designs get larger, you have to leave more wood, isn't it? So we, we've yeah. we've designed it. Which again um, is a little safety thing. It's, you know, you that's don't right. Want, you we don't, don't want to spend want hours and hours and then going, them. exactly. And it's, again, these things, it's learning from experience. That came about, I just noticed we got a comment there from Tommy. Uh, I don't like wear gloves, friend, you know, I put one glove in my right hand, I'm going to use a grinder. Yeah, yeah, I, we're similar, Tommy, so that's, yeah, we, we, we'd be the same. It, I just find that when you lose that sense of touch, it does take something away from your carving. Yeah, basically, this, this came about leaving more wood on the, uh, on the spoon itself. Uh, that came about from my, my mistake. I designed a spoon and we cut it a little bit too delicate. Yeah. And we broke the spoon, and but, so but there again, you you can be you live and you learn over cautious. Yeah, that's but, right. And sort of mark, you know, leaving um, 
leaving a little bit extra. Yeah. And then you've got to work that out, don't you? Whether That's right. You cut it spot on first time. Yeah. Um, you're oh, saving a lot of time. I think what you're referring to, it's a balance, isn't it? Yeah. That's the yeah. that's the key. You with know, it. back on the safety thing. Yeah. Um, it's. Uh, I think why I highlighted it is this particular conversation. The reason I highlighted it was because it was an advice that was being given to a, a, a boy, basically. And I, and I think when you're dealing, you know, with children, you really have to do everything that you can to be safe because it's, if he goes and has an accident, in, in that case, if he'd have had an accident afterwards, um, it's very, it's, I don't very often join well, in conversations I mean, like that, but another I- Another important factor is not, you know, is not to use a blunt. <laughs> Tool. tool, yeah, absolutely. Um, that, that Sharp really tools are safer. So again, yeah. it's, it's all about balance because um, you know if you're if you're pushing with a blunt chisel, yeah, then there's more chance of uh, doing damage either to the product you're working on or yourself. It's uh, yeah, absolutely. But it's interesting because you you have adapted um, your own method of working. And for better or for worse. Well, <laughs> you do it because you you carve in that which is really unconventional. Yeah. I I would carve with I wouldn't carve with the spoon in the vice. Or right. At least I I didn't used to. Yeah. I would have the 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 spoon uh, on the bench. Okay. And it would be secured. Um, with with a clamp, clamp or yeah. right, and there are <coughs> special carving clamps. Yeah, there's some interesting systems. Yeah, so that would be done on on the um, uh, on the bench. So right. the vice was only ever used for for sawing and cutting and you know securing things. It it wasn't used the way you do it. Right. Um, but you should really show. People, why you carve with that um, particular method? Because it isn't about the sharpness of the chisels. It isn't about what you're cutting. It's more to do with your back. Yeah, it's to do with you. You know, basically, um, I was fortunate or unfortunate to to have. I, I used to do. I used to do athletics, and I was unfortunate enough to have problems with my hamstrings and I didn't realize that what actually caused it um, it was the wood carving and so basically when I was um, when I was coming through then dad um, you you would carve standing up wouldn't you and yeah. you would you would stand what would we say at 90 degrees at 90 degrees to your work well you're, you're, you're working with a piece on the bench so you can't get your hands Right, unless you unless you come to the end of the bench, yeah, I tended to be working. You know, I was forcing myself on an angle. That's right. So, and you you'd be <coughs> basically so your to, back would be twisted. Yeah. To cut a long story short, because of the angle and the shape of our bench, the way we that I used to carve, and the way then that Dad would carve more, you you would be working at a bit of an angle and. To a degree, you'd be bending and twisting at the same time, yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah. It'd be interesting to know and if anybody gets back problems, actually. Yeah, it'll be interesting to know if any of you do have any back issues with, with the carving. So basically, I, I was doing athletics, doing sprinting, I kept on tearing my hamstrings. And, and the physio, he looked at me, he said, well, there's nothing wrong with your hamstrings. He said, they're some of the strongest I've ever seen. He said, but your back is, is dreadful. Um, and it was what had happened, because I was twisting and bending at the same time to do my carving, um, and it, it, it is relevant. Uh, if any of you do have back issues, yeah, let, let us know because it is it is relevant. Your carving technique can can cause that and play a role in it. And so what he said is because I was bending and twisting at the same time, it was causing the one side of my back to be overdeveloped and the other side underdeveloped. Yeah, yeah. So we looked at it and, and between myself and the physio, we changed the way that I carved. So that's why then now I sit square on to what I, yeah. I'm i doing. You have to pull um, the of back, actually, dear. Yeah, well, now today I'm having to do it slightly different because of the sheer length of it, but I still positioned myself so I am actually, so I'm square on. Yeah, and, and, and your, 
you're pushing your chisel so the whole of your back frame yeah all of your frame is pushing yeah in one direction because the Whereas one when i was carving i was pushing with my right hand yeah and the right side of my body yeah so well, what's, what and what's, no, and, it, and it, it does come into safety because um, if you're doing a lot of carving, as, as we are, carving on a daily basis, basically that's what the physio is saying, it's, it's a pure sort of posture thing, where that posture, you have to get as much as you can that back um, square, square on. Um, I, used, I used to compensate by using the mallet. Yes, you would, you would use the mallet a lot more. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's in, it's interesting, different sort of techniques and styles. Um, you, you very much got to do what suits yourself, but I had to completely, I had to relearn to carve, didn't I, in, in my, uh, in my mid-20s. If mid absolutely new to it, you notice that Dave is now carving with the grain, obviously, that's the important thing. Yeah, absolutely. Carve as much as you possibly can. Yeah. With the grain. Well, this one now is, well, this is an interesting piece of wood. It's not the easiest for carving. Uh, where, where does this one come from? Is this the one that we've had locally? Yeah, that's the that's the last of our. Um, it's going <laughs> It is going to be. A la uh, it's, it's from the pipeline, is it? Yeah, it's from. The ah, pipeline. well, there we are. To give you the background on this piece of wood, uh, LNG, liquefied natural gas. There's a pipeline that runs right the way across Wales to Gloucester, with liquefied natural gas that comes into Milford Haven, and um, this tree fell victim to it. It was basically in the way of the pipeline, so they cut it down. But we were fortunate enough to get hold of some and we seasoned it, dried it all out, ready for us to be able to use it for, for love spins. A beautiful wood and a, a, a really nice character to it, but it's not the easiest for carving. It's quite a physical, quite a physical wood to, to carve this particular piece. Oak is one that we use a, a lot of, as we've mentioned uh, previously. So I'm working on that daffodil again. But that's the nice thing with it. You really do see, you can see some of the character coming out in the, in the grain. Hopefully as well, I've been playing around a bit with the camera, with, one of the, the, with what they call the picture profiles and things like that. So hopefully this week you might be able to see more of the detail. But uh, yeah, let's have a little look. So once we've done the daffodil, I'm going to go on to using, uh, I'm going to have a little look at the dragon, one that we've demonstrated previously. One of the more intricate carvings that we do, the Welsh dragon, lots of little bits of detail, but a nice one for, for us to work on. I will ask you now as well, Thomas the Woodcarver, any other any other thoughts when it comes to health and safety and things like that? Of course, well, for, for anybody you know really new into the trade, yeah. Um, I, I mean, d dust is 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 a really important issue because yeah, you've got to protect yourself from dust. And some of the t timbers that you use, yeah. Uh, I mean, I've actually been banned. Yes. You know, since yeah. Since I started my trade, so yeah. yeah. You you know you you have to be. Um, you have to. Of, of the, uh... Yeah, so I, I think where as well then the safety aspect comes in, like as McDad mentioned when he started, things like dust masks. Did you? When was the when was the first time that you, you saw them working with the dust masks? Oh boys. Because um... back then, I mean, things like asbestos and stuff like that, you'd have been in and around working with it, wouldn't you? Yeah, we worked with it all. It uh, yeah. It was never an issue. No. Then you see dust mask. I, I'm not sure exactly when. No, no, no. But it wouldn't have been for quite a few years until you'd have seen stuff like that. And I think then when it comes into it, the uh, with with the dust and things like that, it comes more into the uh, the machines. Yeah. That's where it comes in more. I just noticed there were comments on there. Oh, that's where Tommy was saying about the gloves. Sorry about that. There we are. So, yeah, nice part of this process as always because we've. Because we've uh, glued that paper drawing on, as we're doing our carving, you see that beautiful grain coming out as, as we're sort of, uh, as we're carving out the shapes. Yeah, with, with the machines, I mean, for instance, you know, you, you get the different guards, so we always recommend using that. The scroll saw, one of the key things with scroll saw safety is um, having eye protection, because on the very 
rare occasion you can have a blade that almost shatters on you and um, you've got to protect those eyes it's basically being as careful as possible and we always say it's on a, it's in our description it's in our description of our youtube channel if you're not sure if you're not you know if you're not sure about using a piece of equipment or if you're not sure how to do something seek advice ask people send people messages put a comment on a video ask people about it because safety is uh, is always worth putting some time and attention on yeah. and, and, and the another thing about uh, safe use of uh, tools and um, how to hold different things uh, again one of the most important thing is is time yeah it's not ever to rush no that's job, right which is easier said than done, done. yeah that's right um, because, uh, well for us time and i think what happens as well i mean for, for us one thing i would say we seem to be under pressure of more time now than than ever really which is not good for wood carving is it you no, should really be no. taking your time um but you know we get a lot of requests where people are asking for them by a particular deadline, which is not ideal at all for yeah. when it comes to wood carving. How do you say today? Okay, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I'm at fault today because I should have sharpened those chisels yeah. before we started the live stream. Yeah. Um, because they need, they're I, ready for I a really bit of a... Need, I'm going to take one at a time. Is that all right, Dave? That's fine. Okay, I'm just going to take one at a time. I think, though, anyone who does follow our live streams, it, it does give an idea of how frequently we're sharpening. Oh, yeah, Cause it, it, yeah. it just, just, you know, in the live stream. Which Start off with that one, because okay. that one's going to be the most useful okay. as I carry on with the live stream. Okay. Uh, okay, you can highlight the top of this one. Yeah, Tommy's you? saying the same thing with the dust. Yeah. Dust I, is pretty... I like that one there. Look. There you go. Show the edge, so, the very edge of it, you can see the white. Yeah. Um, on both sides. Let's well. have a little look. See if we can just catch it. I, I that is there's a there's a little tiny nick yeah, there as well. Yeah. And so that one there, that's due for sharpening. Yeah. So that's for sharpening then we use a Tormek. Before and after. And again, it's yeah. when it comes to safety, better off to just take that moment yeah. to sharpen. What I'll do, I while start sharpening that one, because I need that one a little bit for finishing off the daffodil, I'll go on to our dragon. So hopefully with today's live stream, we're going to end up where we're doing a little bit of work on all the different aspects of this design. Hopefully then at the end of the live stream, it will all, it'll all come together. That's what we hope. The dragon, as I said, one of, uh, one of the most popular carvings that we do now. Um, it's got plenty of, plenty of detail to it. And it's, it's only, it's only the last few years then that we, started doing the um the full pen dragon on a, a more regular basis just notice another comment there we'll check it out i like to know where all my timber comes from probably 90 percent of the timber i can tell yeah yeah the timber same it's it's a it's a big aspect of what we do as well so that's why we've started we were actually discussing it today as the weather's getting better, we want to do a video um, and we very much sort of, it'll be like a, a back to nature um, because we, we want to film it in um, the field behind. Very nice. Oh, hello, Yelly. Wow. Yelly's joined us. That's the first time Yelly's been with us for a little while. That's my wife there's just joined us on the live stream. Um, yeah, we want to um, do a video where we, we go in the field behind and we, we sort of show everyone what we've been doing in terms of planting trees and um, a little bit of a, a log to love spoon video. That's, that's the idea of, that we've got in mind. So that is, uh, yeah, one of our videos that we're going to... You mentioned it before, we, we've suffered in this area from ash dieback. Yeah, because Tommy was saying he, he likes to know where his wood comes from. And it's, it's the same. We like to know, um, like we've got things like our mahoganies. We get them in. Uh, there's a gentleman, Peter. And what happens in this area then, as the double glazing companies, they're putting in plastic. They're ripping out hardwoods. Nobody wants it. So he brings it down to us. 
He's literally taking that from um, a skip where they would just take it all out and you people would use it for their fires. And it's some of it is beautiful mahogany. I think that one. There we are. Okay, it's not. There we are. So Dad's just I put that completely one. Completely got away. There's a slight. There's a slight little feather edge still on it, but. And there's a bit on the back. It's going to be a lot safer. But, uh, it's going to be a lot safer now and cutting a lot better than it was two minutes ago. So you can see we use the different stop cuts. So using that paper drawing as a guideline. The only issue when you're, well, there's a couple of issues, but when you're using a paper drawing, a couple of things. It does take the edge off the gouge a little bit more quickly. And also then you have to do, I actually think it's a positive thing. You have to carve everything a little bit more deeply because afterwards we have to do a bit of work on our belt sander to take that, um, that paper drawing off. So uh, we just have to carve a little bit further into the wood itself. But yeah, hopefully, um, you know, hopefully some of those ideas might be useful for anyone concerned about their carving and, and, the, and carving safely. Because it's, it's a great thing to do, wood carving. It's a lovely process, but it's something that you want to be able to enjoy and enjoy it safely. Because if you... If you go into accident and emergency for things, then it can uh, it can spoil the fun somewhat. And I, that was the the reason I sort of got involved in a conversation with it was because um, when you're dealing with children, if they've got an interest in wood carving, you don't want them to be put off by having an accident because that's the quickest way of. Turning Did them off. Mentioned as well about cheaper sanding belts. Did we mention that before? Yeah, we're still waiting, are we? We're still waiting. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, we're still we, waiting we'll, on our sanding if, belts. If it does materialise, we'll give out the name of where you can get them from. Yeah, it's, we will. Uh, if if they turn up, we as well. We've been checking out your um, your suggestions from last week. Hopefully, hopefully this time next week we'll have something sorted out for um, clock movements, that sort of thing. But we've been, um, yeah, we've been having a good look around and there's some, there were some really good suggestions from you all. So thank you for that last week. It's basically, we're, we're going back to how our workshop was many years ago. Uh, to give you the background on us, we're with the Love Spoon and being, we're, we're in an area of West Wales that's close to Temby. And Temby is a popular seaside resort and has been with coach groups and things like that so we've always had coach groups in here and have always explained the tradition but well, because of the circumstance we haven't seen coaches for we've seen a few but not many for the last the last 12 well 12 months now yeah um so we've gone from having around about 10,000 visitors in the workshop to having uh it's around about 400 less than 400 to be honest but um, what has happened, we've looked at you know, what we do and we've always had to have buy-in things to sell. So we've got an, enough of a display. So we would buy things like um, little Welsh souvenirs, that sort of thing from uh, different sort of wholesalers. Now we're, we're sort of trying to get back to where we have pretty much everything in the shop are either made locally or made by ourselves, aren't we? So that's why we're looking more at clocks and barometers, that sort of thing, is to try and get back to where we started. Always remember, Dad would have, you would have anything up to 20 coaches in a week. Yeah. And you'd have nothing to sell them. Because you'd have the first few coaches would come in, they'd buy everything he'd made and... Uh, and that was that. He'd be giving talks and demonstrations and there'd be nothing there for them. And then we'd be, we'd be, we'd be making, trying to make like mad, wouldn't we? To yeah. try and get some sort of display for people Burn to see. Burning the midnight oil. Burning the midnight oil, that's right. Here we go. So you can just see where, what I will do. I'll do all of these cuts. Health and safety wise, that's something I shouldn't do. But you will see me doing is holding one gouge and cutting with another. Shouldn't do it, but it's a bad habit. There we go. I tell you what, we'll finish these off. 
So you can see, I like the, the Welsh Dragon because you get all of those little bits of detail. That's what really makes it. We do a simpler version of it, but I prefer this one for carving because you get all those nice little bits of extra detail on it. Gives it a little bit more character. So on to the eye. So we do a little stop cut in the one direction, another stop cut in the opposite direction. You've got a little bit, there's a little line if you have a look on the Welsh Dragon, going one, two, three. There we are. And then just a little bit of detail again. Of course, mentioning the, the Welsh Dragon, there's been a lot of fuss with the rugby. Our thought is only a game, boys. It's only a game. But we've uh, seen there's been a lot of talk about it all afterwards. You win some, you lose some. That's life. There we go. So you can see just doing a little bit of little bit of detail on there. And then just to finish the eye off, this little gouge. Difficult one to sharpen this one. But we just finish that off just with a little cut. Just like so. I'm going to do a little one as well. Um, the nose, we'll do just a, a little point using the gouge again. So all the time, just shaping as we go. And then just a little point on there like so. How many have you got through so far? Dad's, Dad's frantically sharpening these gouges for us. How many have you got through? Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five. This is number five, so. Brilliant. But for everybody again, you notice the difference, a sharp gouge makes yeah. a big difference. I mean, we've got, what have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oof, probably that's about 50 gouges in there. 20, 28, that's 28. Uh, well, no, you, you've got more than that, actually. Have we really? So. I would say there are about 20 to 30 gouges that we use on a regular basis. Yeah. And then the We've others got get a bit more. We've 100 chisels. There we are. And gouges in there, but we're only using. Uh, I'd say about say 20 to 30, yeah. I would say. Yeah. We, we hardly ever go to the other Well, ones. those, again, those who see our live streams regularly, you, you'll notice that I have sort of go to gouges. And that's what you'll find with, with carving. Yeah, let us know in the comments section which are your, which are your go to uh, gouges and tools, because you, you'll always have. I mean, for instance, I would say for ourselves, our go-to tools are the scroll saw. There we are. That one now has been there sharpened. We are. That's that been sharpened. Got, that isn't an original handle. That's. Um... And this one, this is a. It's interesting. Is is that a wood carver's gouge? Would you say? You know, is that would that have been made as a wood carver's gouge? I would have thought. Yeah. Yeah. Because some of the tools thought. that we work with, they they're not specifically for wood carving. Well, that's artists. That's. Oh, so add this, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that would be a wood carving gouge. Um, but some of the tools we got in there, I remember you, you started with that one, is it? Yeah. Would that be a wood carver's gouge? No, I would say no. that was more joinery. See? More of a joinery gouge, but it's a beautiful gouge and beautifully made. Oh, I think what we're getting at, sometimes people ask us, they'll say, oh, I've got a, a set of, you know, a certain type of gouge. I always tell people, have a go with them, have a go working with them and see if they, if they do the job well. So never sort of write any gouges in or out. Try them first and, and see if they do if they do the job. So to do the base of the wing next, we again just do those stop cuts. So we just start off doing those stop cuts just like so. And we'll use then that stop cut to form a lot of the other carving and a lot of the other detail from. And that's what you find is, I don't know, is it like doing a jigsaw or a painting or something? Um, where, where sort of one bit leads to being able to do in another bit. I think in some ways it's the opposite to painting, because with painting, you're putting paint on a canvas with wood carving, you're taking wood away from the carving. But I can paint, but I can, I can do a bit of wood carving. So you can see, there we go, just bringing out those little bits of detail. Just giving a bit of depth to it because what we ultimately want the wing is is on the outside so the back wing we push back and then the front wing is in front of the body and a lot of it is creating it's just creating that effect creating that image 
that sort of idea. It's, it's quite interesting sharpening actually because um, you know you know I, 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 I often I have a split like today now I'm starting going through them making sure everything's sharper. Well you realize you know, how much they need sharpening when you start sharpening. <laughs> yeah but I also uh, what happens because we're so busy yeah you know that's one of the things it's, it's a question of discipline really and, and you know when you know a chisel isn't right, put it to one side, ready for sharpening, yeah. or sharpen it then straight away. All I tend to do is to sharpen half a dozen at a time. As you know, I take six in there. It's, and it's I something, it, it's, it, it's confession time. It's something that I should dedicate more time to. Exactly. Because I, I, tend to, I tend to just let things go and wait until Dad sharpens them, basically. So it is something that I should uh, definitely uh, be dedicating uh, more time his, to. His, his confession is justified. Because I, what happens? I keep car I keep carving it, and when I, and it is in terms of safety, it's very poor on my part because I'll keep carving with them, and and I'll just push a little bit harder and push a bit harder, yeah. and and, and that's what happens. I I then when you when you apparently have finished the spoon, I then do the shellacking. Yes. Okay. So it, and I take it. I go in then. It to shellac, creates and more I can work. Tell then whether some of the cuts well, are correct and, and clean. Or if the gouges need exactly. a sharpen. Exactly. So it shows up then, in especially the on your, well, you can tell before you even put your first coat on. Yeah. <coughs> and occasionally I have to bring a spoon back in. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> but it is, it's my, uh, it's my confession. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of, uh, of sharpening, but it is such an important part of. Uh, it kind of makes such a difference, doesn't it? Wood carving, yeah, absolutely. Like, well, some of these, some of these chisels. I mean, there's a there's a good example if you show that one there now. Well, we're just you using know. that one. Oh, there we are. How do you sharpen this one? Hey, how do you sharpen exactly, this one? I'm going to sharpen it now, but that's the kind of thing. How do you sharpen it? Well, I. Because the problem is, you can sharpen it on the outside, on the external angle, yeah. but sharpen it on the internal. Yeah. How do you get in there? Can't get a slipstone in there. No, what happens? I'll 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 rub it on a piece of um, hardwood or something like there that. There we are. To the Just to take off. the burr off. That's what I'm referring but, uh, to. It's not a problem chisel. to sharpen. It's a problem for taking the burr off. That's the I mean. kind of chisel that we tend to leave. Yeah. Um, this one the other day. Now this. I just sharpened that. This is a very interesting. Now this. Well, this was desperate for sharpening, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. Now this is a very interesting one because if I'm writing a name, I use that one there, and. Um, Con yeah, confession type. What, what will happen if you don't sharpen it, especially on things like oak and ash, where you get the spring summer growth, it'll shift across yeah. and it'll actually cause you a big problem then. You've got to carve everything back out yeah. because it shifts the grain yeah. and then you've got a big problem. I think you've got, from the colour of the, uh, the thumbnail there, we've got Midnight Joker. We have. Hello, Midnight Joker. Uh, how many duplicate chisels, gouges do you have? So you can keep carving. Right. Uh, good question. The duplicate ones we've got are um, so there's there's one you could sharpen. Uh, the main one, basically, the two that I use the most are oh, those you've two. Got that one there as a duplicate, That's right. You see. So you'll see we've got one, two, and this is the most. These are the most important ones. So those two you will see me using again and again and again. The duplicate ones we've got of that. Uh, one, there, that is a, uh, what is that one? That's an Addis, made in Sheffield. I'll explain the story of the Addis family, very interesting. Somebody explained this to me on on uh, on, on, on YouTube. Uh, again, that one there is an Addis, so those are both duplicates of that one there. And then this one is a duplicate of that one there, and again, that's an SJ Addis. So those, those are our duplicates. So we've got one, two, three, uh, and I know I have, those are just the three I can put my hand on straight away. We have got other ones in there. Another one then, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll see me using a lot, is this one here. That's, that's virtually a replica. That is also a replica for it, and that is a, a, a replica for it. So we have that one there. The one gouge you will see us using that we've tried all shapes to replace but have never had any success is that one there. Broken handle, too short to still really have any work in life to, to any degree. 
but we cannot find one that is exactly that sweep. And for us, I don't know why, but that exact sweep is really important. Dad's taken one that is very similar to in, in there for sharpening, but finding another one like that, yeah, has proved really, really difficult. Um, we've had, even had them specially made. I, we had, the one that Dad's taken in is the closest we've ever had, and it was made by um, Sorby, Robert Sorby. Really nice, uh, really nice tools, Sorby. That was one thing with the question that people were asking for getting uh, youngsters started with the carving. There's, there's popular carving with knives and that sort of thing. A lot of the um, flex cuts and things like this is popular, but the ones that are being made here in the UK still, Sorby, uh, Ashley Isles, even Henry Taylor's, they're making some really good wood carving gouges, so you, you can still get good ones. Not as good, in fairness, not as good as uh, Addis and Herring Brothers, but they are certainly very good gouges. Another thing as well to try and avoid is um, we have bits of metal in and around the bench, which is not a good thing, because they can just catch, and then that can damage the edge, can damage the edge of the blade. Here we are, let's just carve in the opposite direction. So we've done as much carving as we can in the one direction, and then we turn it round and work the other way. That one there is just referring to, did? Yeah. One of the ones you've got in that, the, the, the Sorby one, because that's the closest we've got, isn't it, to yeah. a replica for that one there. Um, but there's still a fraction of a difference. It's and, amazing. And it's, ju it's just the, the... I think as well, what makes a difference, I think as this... Slightly thicker metal? Yeah. Yeah, and I think what will happen as well, as this one gets worn down to possibly there, it Plus may be the same angle. Only just give it a tiny so you can see that one there. You, you try that one now and it's lovely. They're nice to work with. If anyone uh, comes across those, and again, it's Sorby that makes them, they do macro yeah. carving gouges. Really nice to work with. I, I, I enjoy working with the macro well, Somebody asked about you know, duplicate ones. Now yeah. These, right. put those down there. This is your original right. set, isn't it? That's my original uh, there we are. set. And they're a marble set, in fairness. Yeah. Um, and they are quite nice chisels. Um, there we go. And we do go to those quite a lot. But the interesting thing, as you said, these ones are thicker yeah. metal. Yeah. Which is... I prefer myself. Or oh, the thinner metal, yeah. I prefer the thinner metal. Yeah. That's where Addis. So, so Addis, Addis, that is where they were, that's where Addis was sort of streets ahead, was that their metal was thinner, and so for for use, they, they're just, they did, the, the thinner metal, I don't know, it just, for, for me anyway, um, it does make, does make a difference to us. So what we're doing, we're doing all of those little bits of detail on the, um, on the on the, the the dragon's wing. Nice thing with Love Spoon then, you can combine um, different symbols. So a popular one that we that we do on bespoke Love Spoons is to combine the you you put the dragon or the daffodil and the rose. So you can have symbols from to represent England, represent Wales, and then the dragon. Nice part you have with the story that that can represent protection. And then a flower, a rose, things like that can represent um, the hope that love will blossom or continue to blossom. So this is what we do. We, we really tell stories and portray messages through, um, through the work that we undertake. Yeah, I was going to go back as well to um, the story of the Addis family. They, um, so I was told on, um, somebody explained it to me because they were a fan of... Um, Addis tools as well. There's a connection between Herring Brothers and SJJ Addis. Um, I think one of the brothers married the, the daughter of one of the families or something like this. So there was a connection between both of them and they were making really good quality gouges in London. And um, they ended up where one of them, because it was more steel production, one of the sons, I think it was, moved to um, Sheffield. And, but apparently it all got a bit nasty and um, they, were, they were attacked and his wife and his children and things like this. So I think something happened with the unions and stuff like that. And um, 
that, that, that I think they stopped making gouges. So this was the story we were, we were explaining that the the tool making it all got a bit uh, all got a bit nasty. But that's a bit of the background on the story of of Addis. But all I know is that they definitely knew what they were doing when it came to making uh, hand gouges and hand tools. So now I got this one back, we can just do a little bit more work on our daffodil. So we're just working on the front of the trumpet and straight away you can feel the difference from when I was carving that earlier on to now with that nice freshly sharpened gouge. So we're just going to go and get a little bit of depth and detail on the wing, just like so. Other things when it comes to the safety then, you'll notice we always have a block underneath where we're carving so it can't slip as easily in the vise. Sometimes you'll need to sand the, the vise as well because it gets a little bit of a sheen on it and it can make it just a little bit slippery inside the, the vise itself. There we are, I think that is, yeah, we're largely there on that part. I'm gonna carve that back the other way so we don't end up taking out too much of the wood. Let's have a little look here. So it's, what it is, the, the, the direction of the grain, it's just carving, it's gonna carve better. I'll end up having to take out too much if I carve in the, uh, the opposite direction. And again, going back to what I was referring to, with the gloves, that is one of the things where I am dubious myself when it, it comes to using gloves with wood carving. If you are, if I had gloves on, I wouldn't be able to feel that it was better to turn it round in the vise. I wouldn't be able to feel that as easily. But because I, I haven't got anything on my hands, I can feel that the wood wanted me to turn it round and work the other way. So, you know, we've all got our methods. You may have a, a, a different idea on stuff like that, but for me, that's why I do it that way without the gloves on is I've, I've got a better sense of touch and a better grip on the, on the tool itself. So again, just finishing off with the front claw of the dragon. There's just a few little bits of detail that come out like so. One, two, and three. And as I said, that's why we like the dragon is you can add quite a bit of detail to the carving. This one, it's a bespoke love spoon. So what we mean by that is that it's basically somebody has contacted us and asked, can you carve this, 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 and this? So we've designed it for them. Different to a lot of the requests we have this one because they've actually, they requested the, the size of the spoon as well, which limits us a little bit because you're working to their, their sort of size preference that they're asking for. Um, and I prefer to keep things the naturally in proportion. You don't even have the fluorescent mm -hmm. light on, do you? Yeah, no, it, no that's the, it's an LED in there, oh, so we're, we're okay with that. Do you want this one on there? Because that's another aspect as far as safety is concerned, is, is to make sure you have good light. Yeah, if you and want to pop that one it also makes a difference to the carving, because, again, when I go into shellac... Um, with shellac and you need different light, don't it's, you? It's one of the frustrations, actually, because we need to sort out a new place to shellac. Yeah. Because, you, you know, you either want daylight yes. or uh, you, you need decent light to sort of see. Well, yeah, LED lighting is is good because it's, you know, we, we, we use that a lot. We use it a lot with the, the filming. You get a... a, 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 a it's, the, it's the temperature as well of the light that I find makes a, a difference. Right. The fluorescence as well. We, we're in the process of getting rid of all of those because... Um, the cameras don't like them, they flicker. Yeah. So because we do the filming, we prefer not to use fluorescence because they tend to flicker and affect the quality of your of your video. Right, so that's that folded opening back in. Here we are. 
Right, so I think we've got the legs to finish off on our dragon. And a lot of this, we will end up going over afterwards. But it's just to give you an idea, because what happens, we'll sand it all down, and then we'll have to go back over our detail just to bring it out again. So there we are, just working into there. We could have had an easier emblem like the car, can we? T just wheels, they had to have a dragon, didn't they? They gave us a dragon, a daffodil, and a leek, yeah, and the, the feathers. The daffodil's not so bad, and... Uh... Thistle's easier. Yeah. I think the rose is, the rose is a little bit more complex than the, um, than the, the daffodil, but it's certainly easier than the, yeah, so it's, the uh, dragon. Saying that, in, in, in Scotland, didn't they, they have, somebody sent to me the other day, they wanted a Scottish unicorn on there, which I didn't even know there was such a, I didn't know there was a link with Scotland, but there we go. On Ireland, you've got the, um, got the shamrock, shamrock. The US, it's the uh, eagle. That's one of the simple, so that's not the, we've carved that a couple of times, but it's not the easiest. They're never the more, you know, they're not the simplest of carvings for the love spoons, really. No. And then Spain, we're working on a few for Spain at the moment. And we had to, car we, we've been carving a bull. Um, although having a Spanish wife, she doesn't like the bull much. She doesn't, well, she likes the bull. She doesn't like the, the history too much with the, 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 the bull fighting. That's a... That tends to polarise them a bit. Well, and a, bull, the, a bull in Wales would be slightly different anyway, wouldn't it? <laughs> Dave, you're looking at me now. I'm, you, what I'm, say. I, I, I'm wondering whether we're going to get... Might end up with a live stream being taken off. <laughs> well, how can we talk a lot of bull? All oh, right. <laughs> we might still have the live stream uh, taken off. Uh, we, um, yeah, we... What's the flower for Spain? Carnation? So we're doing one with a carnation yeah. on. Um, so that no, was... No, sharp, no, so be careful, you won't, don't go and cut yourself, don't right? Go, don't cut myself, now. Right. I put myself in a catch-22 now. It's, it is, as I was saying, it's all starting to... It's all starting to come together. Now, we've got a symbol here, because I know um, Tommy is in... Um, I'm pretty sure he's in Yorkshire. Right. And of course, the Yorkshire, you've got the Yorkshire Rose. Right. But we use it here in Pembrokeshire as well, see, because we call it the Tudor Rose. Yeah. So uh, we... But it's, isn't it a combination of... Um, and there's sort of two combinations? Cause I'm not sure. The Tudor Rose. Help, Tommy. Tell us about it. Well, there probably is a difference. I, uh, there, there probably is a slight difference um, with the two. But we use the Tudor Rose for, for Pembrokeshire. But I know that when we've had groups in from Yorkshire, they, they like those spoons because they see it as a, as a Yorkshire Rose. Yeah. So that's the... There we go. Talking health and safety. Try not to drop your gouges. And if you do drop it, don't try and catch it. No, well, that's the one, yeah. You definitely don't do that. Let them drop. That was something they taught me in the in, in the rugby. If they if they if they're stamping on you, you lift your legs up so they can't get any purchase. See? Oh, there we are. It's the same with the gouges. You, you, if you can try and uh, try and get everything out of the way, then it can't. Because uh, you did once drop one on your foot, didn't you? Oh yeah. In the middle of uh, demonstrating to a group. Never good, but there we are. These things happen. But in fairness. For someone who's been carving for how many years? 55 years, you have you haven't done bad at all, have you? Let's hope it continues that way. Well, you know, the worst cuts I get are on the machine. Yeah. yeah. They're the worst, uh, no. And we've, all, we've avoided sort of certain machines, haven't we, because of the, the safety with it. Things like the spindle. Oh, the spindle. Molder, things like that. Yeah, the, yeah, we've never had kit like well, that. Well, even the rotor you've got to be careful with. Yeah, of course. You know. But again, when we use the rotor, 99 times out of 100, the wood is secured. Yes. And you have two hands then. To control the machine. Yeah. So hopefully now you can start to see, you can see we're done with our daffodil. We're well on with our dragon. 
We've had a few as well. I'm thinking it's, it's quite interesting how often we were talking about the symbols and emblems. A lot of countries use flowers. It's very interesting, yeah, isn't it? Because yeah. I know we're doing one at the moment for Hong Kong. And that's a, that's a flower. Um, we, we're doing one as well. Oh, I've, I've got myself now. It was, it's with Jasmine, but I can't, I can't remember what country that one was for. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of countries use the, uh, the flowers as emblems. So you can see, this is quite delicate now. So we've scroll sawed these, the, the pattern out and things like the feet then, quite delicate parts to, to the design. We've got a few, we've got a comment on there at all there. Do you want to check that? Uh, the the Yorkshire and Lancashire rows are Tudor, one from the inside of the other. There we are. Now I thought there was something uh, combined there. Yeah, we have it. It's um, it's St David's Cathedral. You'll see it on um, yeah. Henry no, no, Tudor's no, father, isn't it? Yeah, I just put this chisel down. It's it's um, an Addis chisel, Dave. Okay. But. You want to just show that one? Ah, there's, this is one of the ones we were shown earlier to show that we've got a... There's a lot of pitting on it. Yeah. Uh, which is something I'm afraid we can't avoid. Uh, it's it's, we're buying it's in the chisel. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of pitting on the back there. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm using the slipstone on this one because... Uh, it, it generally has come from where, where there's, the gouges have been stored before we've had them, hasn't yeah. it? So yeah, if they've been stored in a shed, or, in a shed like or a garage and not been looked after, they start to get pitted. We've got one nice one and that unfortunately that's all pitted. You see along the sides there. And that's obviously been stored somewhere. Not really um, suitable. Well, we keep working on it. Eventually we can get that pit out. Yeah, that's right. There we are. So I think that. Right, a few more bits of detail, and we're going to be finished then with our dragon. And then to finish off, I will just demonstrate finishing <coughs> off our um, our Celtic knot at the top. I've got to stop and think now which way we're going to go. <coughs> yeah, we're going to go. It's just little bits of detail that are left to include on the on our dragon. We could also, you want to have a look with the shellac, just to shellac the different parts of the design you want me to get for the everyone shellac? to see? Okay. Yes, please. We've given Thomas the woodcarver another busy afternoon back and forth. Sharpening gouges and sorting out the shellac. That's why they call me a gopher. Yeah. Let's have yeah. a little look. This piece of wood as well, the oak, is actually carved. It's been easier to carve than... Uh, oh, I, I knew it's a nice piece of wood. Yeah, but, uh, that's been a bit easier to carve than I was it's expecting. Uh, it's, it's what we call... It's a uh, Shetty Shankin Oak. Shetty Shankin Oak. Yeah, it's a uh, bit of Welsh Oak. Bit of Welsh Oak, bit of local oak. It's a little bit more wild than a lot of the oak you will uh, that you'll come across. So just working a few little bits of details into the legs on the dragon. Same on the front, just to really finish it off. Just a few little extra bits of detail. And hopefully that, yeah, hopefully that gives you an idea for the, uh, the, the process that we use. It's those simple methods that we always use but trying to do it as safely as possible. Right, there's the shellac, Dave. Yeah. And the brush. Yeah. And I'm off to frosts now. Here we are, so. Which is one of the most important ore oh, crumbs. I've ripped my trousers now. He's ripped his trousers on oh, the. Oh dear. That's stropping it. That's strop, stropping the gouges, which we have explained. Yeah. Before is, a, is always a risk with Don't the method that you use. Um, yeah. You, you may want to sort of tell people about the history of frosts. Yeah, frosts. That's our local hardware And people could look that up then and... Uh... And there's a local, there's, there's a local bit of trivia, as Dad is referring yeah. to. The first manned flight. I'm afraid this is going to, uh, this is going to upset a, a few of our, 
American cousins. It's going to be very controversial. This is going to be high, high controversy. Because if you have a little look on the uh, internet, Frost, gentleman who worked on the Heen Castle estate, um, the claim is he, he did the first manned flight. And he was very upset with the government, like half the country now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, because they wouldn't fund him because he broke his flying machine and they wouldn't fund him to make another one. But the story goes was that Frost flew across a field near Saundersfoot and then crashed into the hedge. Tell him we're playing. Your wife had just flown in with a car. Yeah, she's going to go through the wall one day. But that's what happened. He crashed into the into the hedge. Not my wife. The the uh, frost in his flying machine, and destroyed his flying machine. But it predates the Wright brothers. Yeah. Have a little look on the internet. F O F F R O S T. Was it frost, Bill or Bob? Yeah, just put in Frost Saundersfoot. And read, put in Frost. No, it's the full thing is Frost Saundersfoot first flight. Yeah. So I'm going down there now to get. So he's off there. down there. You don't need me now, do you, dear? No, I think okay. we're. Uh, so we got. For now, God, everyone. That's Thomas the Woodcarver. He's on his I'm way. Less. Look after yourselves. Absolutely. Right, I'm off down there again. I've got to go down now because it shuts at four o'clock. Yeah. So he's got to. He's got to fly. So yeah, that's the story of Frost, was that he did the first manned flight across a field in Saundersfoot. So apologies if we're upsetting anybody uh, with, with that one there, but uh, have a little look on the internet, well worth, well worth a read. We know all these different uh, little bits of local trivia. Pembroke Dock, that was another one. The Royal Dock, where we believe they... Uh, they built the Millennium Falcon. So for the Star Wars fans, it was built in a hangar in uh, Pembroke Dock. So yeah, some more useless trivia information as we do our car then. Now what I'm gonna have to do, I'm probably gonna have to just move that camera a little bit because uh, what happens, the love spoon's a little bit longer, so it ends up catching, catches the end of the tripod as we're carving it. So I'll move the, uh, I'll move the tripod just to a different angle, just to finish off. But hopefully again, it gives you an idea of the process that we use and the methods and how, you know, we go about our, our own style, our own approach of wood carving. Very subjective, I know, with the with methods and things like that. But we do, we do generally uh, believe that it is a, a relatively safe way of doing it, because most of the time, I know I lapse from time to time where you do see me cutting towards myself a little bit, but as much as possible, I do my best not to and cut away from myself. There we are, so we're just shaping that knot as we go. We just turn it round in the vise and let's see. Yeah, it's just gonna catch that tripod, so I'm gonna move the tripod just to the side and refocus. So bear with me two minutes. There we are, that should be fine. Let's just bring, yeah, we bring that knot a little bit further forward so you can see it being carved. That might actually be a better angle for us to, to use, in fairness. Uh, let's have a little look. So we're just going to shape around the top of the knot. And I think that will be pretty much done for today. Midweek, um, so Wednesday, as always, we will have our next upload. And it'll be back to more what we're used to doing after last week's lamp video thanks to ben q they were pleased with the video so that was nice to know i'm glad to be involved with them on that one there uh yeah we'd be back to something more more normal for what you would expect from us so uh it'll be something either probably scroll soaring based for midweek 
so check that one out and then next week we will be back next Monday with some more wood carving or well, just notice we got a comment there from Midnight Joker uh, Yorkshire uh, I have to visit Bross when I'm on ah yeah yeah and it's like with tools. Ah, they don't, I don't think they have a lot of, um, you'll have to have a look what kit they've got there, yeah. It's, um, it's a nice little shop there. And that's the story with it, is that, um, is that uh, they're descended from uh, the gentleman who did the, uh, the first, first flight of Saunders Foot at least. So we're just finishing off, let's have a little look. Yeah, it'll be starting to get busier in Wiseman's Bridge now. Because the local area has been very, very quiet during the lockdowns. We went into Tembe yesterday and it was getting a little bit busier because they're, an allow they're allowing us a little bit more freedom, but not a lot. And so we, we were seeing a few more people moving about. So just taking a little bit of wood away just to shape what we're carving. Just finishing off the, those, just, I like to angle it. Again, there's different styles and different ways of doing it. That's just the style that I use. And then just this way as well. Yes, that's it. And we're gonna have to turn it round in the vise once more. And that's, the same approach as I always use, as much as you possibly can, you're working with the grain. So you try and react, and it's going back to that situation with the gloves. If I got the gloves on, it's more difficult to feel it, but it's trying to carve in the direction that the, uh, the wood gives you the, the best finish that we get the least amount of resistance, really, from the wood itself. It's a, it's a beautiful material, but if you try and battle it, if you try and work it in a way that it doesn't want to be worked, it's a losing battle. So just turn that round once more, and then we put some shellac on so you can see how all of that is starting to take shape. Just that cut there, that cut there, and all in all, this spoon now, we've got a, probably another hour or so spent working on, um, finishing off, yeah, something like that, an hour on the, on the actual carving. Uh, we then got the hand sanding and the hand finishing. And that one there will be ready. One thing we're doing as well, we've been changing our approach with the hand finishing where we're doing three coats of shellac and um, three coats of shellac and then afterwards we're doing linseed oil mixed with beeswax. It's the advantage of having a, a brother who's a beekeeper. We've got access to some really nice beeswax. So he's made us some beeswax. And it gives it a really nice sheen on the finish. I can't finish on that cut. I'm uh, cutting towards myself, doing something I shouldn't be doing. Let's have a look. There we go. That's fine. Just a little bit of sand in on that one there. Very quickly, we'll go over it again after. Same with the dragon, same with the daffodil. And let's put a little bit of shellac for you all to see how it comes up. Little dab like so. There we are. And then that's always a nice part of the process is to start to see the character and colour in the grain. As we're always saying when it comes to the carving where you're working in the direction of the grain, same when it comes then to the sanding and with the shellacking, as much as you can work in the same direction as the grain. There's a little bit of wood. Just a little... Uh, little shave in there that we don't want to get in the finish. Just checking that there's no paper left on our dragon, that's fine. 
Here we are, so we're just applying that straight up and down in the direction of the grain. And then same with our daffodil as well. There we go. Hopefully that's interesting, hopefully that's useful. Thanks again for joining us, it's much appreciated. We hope the live streams are useful to you all. As I said, we'll be back next week with some more carving. We'll have the video midweek, not 100% sure which one will be uh, uploaded yet, but it will probably be one based around the scroll saw. Uh, let us know any questions, anything you want to know, any thoughts. Get those comments in and uh, hopefully we can help out with anything you'd like to know. Midnight joke as well, yeah, if you're in Wiseman's Bridge, you'll have to pop in and uh, say hello when we're allowed to open again. There we are, thanks all, and we'll be back again next week. Thank you all.